Hey everybody, welcome to day number five of our 30 day EKG challenge where every single day for 30 days I'm gonna be posting these videos that build and build and build for 30 days. The idea here is that every single day you're gonna be able to correlate an EKG finding to the cardiac electrical access and explain it anatomically and learn a little bit about cardiac physiology. Because at the end of the day, the EKG is just a representation of the cardiac electrical system in real life. It's a real thing. And today we're gonna to continue down our pathway of AV blocks and we're gonna finally dive into second degree AV blocks. This is gonna be the first video in a short series on second degree AV blocks. Remember that AV blocks are specific to dysfunction of the AV node. Right? And remember that the AV node is the area that takes these sinus P waves that depolarize the atria, this is our P wave, and the AV node takes that signal and passes it down through the ventricular conduction system and generates a nice QRS complex. And so our relationship between P waves and QRS complexes can be measured in a functional standpoint to the function of the AV junction, right? So AV blocks are really us talking about P's and QRS's. And so when we talk about how we classify AV blocks, remember we have our first degree, we have our second degree, and we have our third degree AV blocks. And just for a quick review, first degree AV blocks as we talked about yesterday is where every single P wave conducts to a QRS complex it just takes too long. Remember, usually it takes 120 to 200 milliseconds. That's our PR interval where we get P to QRS. However, in first degree AV blocks, we just get a little bit of a, a prolongation of that, but it happens every single time. It's the most benign form of an AV block. The second degree AV block is where some P waves generate a QRS complex, but not all of them. So that means that maybe this P wave creates a QRS complex after it, but the next one doesn't. And then a third degree AV block is where none of the P waves generate a QRS complex. And so if you can maybe think of it this way, you recognize that second degree AV blocks are the most vague type of blocks because which P waves generate a QRS? In what fashion are they generating a QRS? What happens when they don't generate a QRS? There are so many scenarios. And interestingly enough, we break them down into different types. Today we're gonna to be talking about type one, but there's also type two, there's high grade, we break them down because anatomically it matters. And I wanna to talk to you about that. So first thing we're gonna talk about is this concept of decremental conduction. And this is a something that is inherent to the AV node itself. Decremental, decremental conduction. Decremental conduction is a, is a characteristic that is inherent to the AV node nodal cells. And what this does and what it means is that if the AV node gets stimulated really fast by supraventricular rhythms, the AV node actually conducts that signal to the ventri ventricles slower. It's a it's kind of a, um, it's nature's way in our hearts of being protective. It's a very protective feature because think of what happens when you have atrial tachycardia or atrial flutter or atrial fibrillation, you're getting bombarded and the AV node is getting bombarded by this signal, and if the AV node passed that signal down every single time really, really fast, we would beat so fast, we'd be quivering, we would die. We wouldn't be able to pump blood. So the AV node actually has this inherent uh, characteristic to it where it will slow it down the faster you go. We usually don't see this. We usually don't see evidence of decremental conduction. But what can happen is that over time, the disease that is whatever process is diseasing or, or um, worsening the function of this AV node will allow for us to see decremental conduction in real time. And so with every single sinus P wave, with every single sinus P wave that's generated, with every subsequent beat, this AV node takes longer to pass that signal down. It takes longer and longer and longer until it fails. And then it starts all over again. And every beat, it goes longer and longer and longer until it fails. And what that ends up creating is it creates this phenomenon where the PR interval, remember the PR interval, interval, I got to spell that right. Remember that the PR interval is our surrogate for AV function. It's the relationship between the P waves and the QRSs. That PR interval 
will elongate and elongate and elongate until we have a P wave that does not generate a QRS, right? This is a, this is a not. And that's what is characteristic of a second degree type one AV block. And we're gonna talk a little bit about what that looks like on the CKG. Why that matters is because the AV node, right? And we'll say in, uh, we'll do it black. This is the AV node and just beneath it, and also black, is the His bundle. These are the two structures that actually create our AV junction. That's the only place where signal can pass through. And so disease of the AV node itself, the AV node proper, we'll say, that's the lesion. It's the local, localization of the lesion of a secondary type 1 AV block. So we know that's exactly where this lesion lies. And so there's other types of AV blocks that as you guessed it, might block the His bundle. But in this case, we have a block here at the AV node proper, right? which is just one part of the AV junction. So let's take a look at this EKG and let's understand how this makes sense with decremental conduction of the AV node proper for our second degree type 1 AV block. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to get an idea of what's going on with the rhythm and I'm going to scan through the way we always do. And there's something that I notice. I notice one is that we have a narrow complex QRS. Our QRS duration is less than 120 milliseconds. Remember that tells me that this QRS is generated by signal coming from the AV junction down the his Purkinje fibers rapidly depolarizing the ventricles. I also notice that there's these gaps. There's all these gaps where there's no QRS. There's a ton of pauses. In fact, I actually see groups of QRS complexes. Groups of two, groups of two, groups of two. That's called group beating. And if I look really, really closely at the way that my P waves and the QRSs will correlate, it, we're gonna to start to see why this is happening. So I'm trying to figure out, this is not a regular rhythm. What's going on? I've got a narrow complex rhythm but it seems to be some type of pattern to it. I seem to see these groups that I did uh, outlined in green. And I look really closely, maybe down here at lead two, and I notice that I do have P waves. I have P waves here, I have them here, I have them here. And this P wave seems to land in front of that QRS complex. This P wave seems to land in front of that QRS complex, but this last P wave, there's no QRS complex. And then look what we see here. We see a P wave in front of that QRS, a P wave in front of that QRS, and then a P wave with no QRS. And when I look at the relationship of those P waves to that QRS complex via my PR interval, I see here my PR interval is probably at the upper limit of normal. That PR interval is about 200 milliseconds, right? Five small boxes. If I look at the next PR interval, that's about seven small boxes, and that would be 280 milliseconds. So it seems like every time the AV node takes the signal of the P wave, every consecutive time it gets slower, it gets worse. And then all of a sudden, it's dropped. And there's no P wave or no QRS associated with this P wave. Let's take a look at the cycle again. It resets. We have a PR interval that's 200. We have a PR interval that's about 280. And then we have no P wave that conducts to the QRS again. So notice we're seeing this decremental conduction. That tells me that this is a second degree type one. It's a second degree type one AV block. If we break this term down, second degree, meaning what? Some, but not all P waves generate a QRS, right? Look, this one does, this one does, and this one doesn't. And then it does, and it does, and it doesn't. So some, but not all of them conduct to a QRS complex. It tells me that this is a second degree AV block. Then I have to figure out what type is it, because the type matters. And so I look at my PR interval, 
and how it changes over time because that tells me if there's decremental conduction or not. That's the, that's the question. Second degree, determine that. Is there decremental conduction? That tells me that it's a type 1 AV block of the second degree because of the block is at the AV node itself. Those exact cells right here in the AV node, not the cells in the His bundle. And that's really important anatomically. Tomorrow we're going to really put that together. But I really wanted you to understand that concept of decremental conduction. And that's why we see PR interval lengthen, 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 drop. Because remember that the PR interval is our surrogate for AV function. So we can see how the AV node behaves through time. So a couple things that we noted here that I want to remember for you guys is there's something called group beating. If you see group beating, I want you to be highly suspicious of a second degree type 1 AV block. Second degree type 1s aren't the only thing that can cause group beating. You can also have blocked PACs, there's a sinus pause, there's a, there's a few things, maybe like a sinus exit block, rare. But this is certainly, second degree type 1 is certainly the most common cause of group beating. And so when, I, when you see group beating like this, I want you to think there is some type of a, there's a regularity to this irregular rhythm. And I wonder if it's because the AV node, it works, it works, and then it drops. And then it works, and it works, and then it drops. Here, notice that we have every time the third P wave arises, there's no QRS. That ratio of 3 to 2 could be 4 to 3, 5 to 4. There's all sorts of ratios that can happen with secondary type 1. But what matters is... Can you recognize that PR interval decremental conduction? So I hope that helps you understand the physiology behind why we delineate, or at least are starting to delineate, the different types of second degree AV blocks. Remember, second degree blocks, there are multiple types because there are two distinct regions of the AV junction. There's the AV node proper, and then there's the His bundle. And as you can probably guess, if a type 1 second degree AV block is a block at the AV node itself, a type 2 it's probably going to be a block at the His bundle. So I hope this helps. I hope you start to put together a little bit of why we have to break down the second degree AV block the way we do. And it does really matter in real life. I know I get a lot of questions about, well, what's the treatment? What's the treatment? You have to understand the physiology and you need to understand the implications of that physiology. We'll say in this case, a second degree type 1 AV block is the most benign form of a second degree block. It can progress to a worse block, it can progress to a third degree. Whatever process is diseasing that AV node can progress to completely block at the AV node. But there are reasons why this one is not as bad as the next one. And we're gonna talk about that more tomorrow. Sorry to leave you on a cliffhanger, but um, we gotta go. I hope you enjoyed um, your coffee, your breakfast, your lunch, dinner, whatever you're doing right now. I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, leave a comment with what you think, and we'll see you on the next day's video. Take care.